Have you thought about buying a house, a camper, adding on? How much would you have to borrow, and what would the payments be? Excel has a lot more built-in functions than Access, and guess what? You can use Excel functions in Access. For instance, Excel has a function called PMT, Payment. You might have used this to calculate the periodic payment for an annuity, or the monthly payment for a loan. Hi, this is Crystal. Let me show you how you can use Excel's payment function in Access. This example shows a form. This section is for input. The controls have a yellow background because, as this form is designed, these are the values that feed other calculations and are required. In column 2, you see the arguments for the payment function. The top three are calculated from what is input. The bottom two are optional and can be changed if you want. Here is a simple example. Let's say you get a loan for $25,000. The annual rate is 5%. The number of years is 10. You will make monthly payments, so the number of payments per year is 12. What will those payments be? Here is the Excel function wizard showing the five arguments for the function. The first three are required. The last two are optional. The arguments for the PMT function are calculated from the values that are input. First is the periodic interest rate. This is the annual interest rate divided by the number of payments per year. The second parameter is the number of periods. This will be the number of years times the number of payments per year. The third parameter is the present value. When borrowing funds, this is the negative loan amount. The fourth parameter is optional and represents the future value. This is the cash balance after the last payment is made. The fifth parameter is also optional. It is either 0 or 1 and indicates when payments are due. 0 means the payment is made at the end of the period, and 1 means the payment is made at the beginning. When you click the Calculate Payment button, arguments are passed to the Excel PMT function, which returns a result of $265.17. The total interest paid over the 10 years will have been $6,820.24. Flipping over to Excel, we can see the same results, so that tells us that the calculation is working. Let's go back to Access. How is this possible? This is one of the beauties of Microsoft Office. The components all work together. What Excel has, Access can use. How is this done? Let's go to the Design view of the form and see what happens when the Calculate Payment button is clicked. Press Alt-Enter to open the property sheet if it is not showing. You can also use the ribbon. Select the control you want information about, the Calculate button. Go to the Event tab of the Property Sheet and click on the Builder button for the event procedure listed in the on-click property. This takes us to the VBA that does the magic. First, five variables are dimensioned to represent each of the five arguments for the PMT function. SG rate is the periodic rate. It is a single precision number and can have decimal places. IN per is a whole number representing the number of payments or the number of periods. CUR PV is the present value. It is currency data type, which means it will carry four decimal places. It will also use banker's rounding. CUR FV is the future value and I type is how payments will be made. A variable for the result, cur payment, is also dimensioned as currency. These next statements to validate information are not necessary, but it is good practice to let code trap as many errors as possible, so required data is checked. 
If the loan amount is null, that means it doesn't have a value. If that is true, the focus for the user is set to the control and the user will see a message that data is missing. Then the code exits. If there is a value, we assign the negative amount of the value to the cur PV variable, which is the present value of your loan and one of the arguments for the PMT function. With me.txt loan helps performance. TXT loan is the name of the control that holds the loan amount. With me dot some object is like picking up a ball. Once it is in your hands, you can toss it up into the air, bounce it, pass it to someone else. These are methods, things the ball can do. When the ball is in your hands, you can also see its properties. How big it is, what color it is, how heavy it is, what it's made of, its shape, and so on. With me.txt loan means that we are going to be referencing the control with a loan amount. Between with and end with are words prefaced with a dot. These represent properties or methods of the object we are using. First, we check its value property. Then, we may invoke the setFocus method. If we are still here, we assign the negative of its value to the variable for the present value of the loan. Going back to the ball, not using with is like picking up a ball to see if it is the right one. It could just be a big white rock in the grass. When you touch it, you know if you have the ball. So, if it is the ball, would you set it down and stand up again, then lean over and pick it up again so you could throw it to someone who has a chance to get someone out on second base? Of course not. By the time you did all that, the runner would probably be safe. Using with makes it more efficient to process multiple actions and queries. With me some object also makes code easier to read. This makes it clear that Everything prefaced with a dot is about this control. Okay, off my soapbox. The annual interest rate needs to be known. If a value is needed, focus is set, and the user gets a message and code exits. The number of years must also be specified. If it is blank, focus is set, the user gets a message, and code exits. So far, each block of code has followed the same pattern. A control is referenced, its value is checked, if data is missing, the user gets a message, and the code exits. Variables may or may not be assigned. Lastly, the number of payments must be known. If that is missing, the code places the user where the data is missing, gives them a message, and exits. After data is OK, calculations are made and variables are assigned. The period rate is the annual rate divided by the number of payments per year. This expression is wrapped in the round function to limit the calculated rate to six decimal places. The number of periods is the number of times per year times the number per year. This is rounded up to the next whole number by adding 0 0.9999 and then taking the integer portion of the result. If the future control is blank, 0 is assumed since that is the default value for the PMT function and processing continues. If the type is null, 0 is assumed again since this is the default Excel uses if not all arguments are specified. We send all five arguments and make the same assumptions that Excel does for the optional arguments. Now that everything the function needs has been verified, we can use the PMT function to calculate the result. OXL means that we will use Excel. Worksheet function means that a worksheet function will be used. PMT means the PMT function. Space underscore at the end of the line means the statement is continued on the next line. This is done so lines are shorter and don't print to places where you can't see without scrolling.
The five variables representing each of the five arguments that the PMT function needs are enclosed in parentheses. The result of the calculation is assigned to the cur payment variable. With the text box control for the payment result on the form, set the value to the cur payment variable and set the focus there, which makes it easy for the user to copy and paste if they wish. Next, the form is recalculated, just in case. Then, the user gets a message that the calculation is done. Could we have skipped all that variable assignment and checking? Yes. You can also reference the control names directly and go right to the PMT function, like this, cur payment equals oxl.worksheetfunction.pmt open parenthesis me.textrate comma me.txt and peer comma me.textpv comma me.textfv comma me.texttype close parenthesis. Okay, that's great, but wait a minute. Let's back up a bit. OXL was used, but it is not dimensioned here, so how does Access know what it represents? Good question. To find that out, right-click on the OXL variable name and select Definition from the shortcut menu. This moves you to the top of the module where you can see that OXL is dimensioned as an object. Dim OXL as object. Excel.application afterward is commented so you know what it will be since object is not specific. It's used for late binding. OXL is an object, so it starts with O. It represents the Excel application. Could have been more wordy in the name and specified application too, but simply decided to call it OXL. It is dimensioned at the top of the module so that all procedures in the code behind the payment form can see its value. It is more efficient to set the Excel object reference once and keep using that while the form is open. This is like checking out a book from the library so you can open it up at home as opposed to running to the library every time you want to look something up. Or Looking things up online, it's like keeping a page open so you can read more later versus having to find and navigate again. If this is the first time this function is being used or the Excel reference has been lost for another reason, the Excel reference is set. This takes a little bit of time, which is why code reuses it when it can. Set OXL equals nothing. To clean up memory being used, the Excel object variable is released if it is set when the form is unloaded. But wait! <laughs> wait, wait, wait! If we created an instance of Excel, don't we need to quit that? Yes, we do. So before we can set the object variable to nothing, we also must quit Excel. Click Reset to clear the input values and start again. If you borrow 30000 at 6% and pay it back monthly over five years, the payment each time will be $579.98. A lot can go wrong. What if everything isn't filled? If a formula references a cell with bad data in Excel, you don't know where the error is. Just that Something is wrong, and the function can't be calculated. Because we are using VBA and not directly passing what the user entered, we can identify problems before errors happen. This code has a lot of data validation. What if the number of payments per year is missing? The user has put where required data is missing, and they can fill it. What if the number of years is not filled out? What if there is no interest rate? What if the loan amount is missing? 
it is a lot more friendly to be told what is wrong and to be placed where data is missing, as opposed to just telling you there is some error. In summary, you've had an in-depth review of Excel's PMT function. You've seen how to use an Excel worksheet function in Access. You saw how to validate data so bad information is trapped. You learned about using with and end with so code performs better and is easier to read. Get the free download. It's a cool tool and you have the source code so you can see exactly what is happening and change it if you wish and learn. Thanks for joining me through sharing we will all get better.